This is the Wikipedia page for No More Heroes series. Welcome to Wikilisten, the podcast where we read Wikipedia pages and provide commentary. I'm Victor Vernado, KSN. And I'm Rachel Teichman, LMSW. And we are joined today with Jonathan Holmes from Lock On and Destructoid. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk about one of my favorite things. And this is great, actually, because one of the things that we do is we we always go deep on Wikipedia pages and, and it always goes deeper than we understand. But now that we have you here, a bona fide expert, <laughs> we'll we'll have the reference that we need to actually get through this with some sort of knowledge. I'm so happy. Jeez, I hope so. It's uh, a lot of pressure, but I'm up to the challenge. You but- heard it here, folks. <laughs> Jonathan Holmes will solve every problem. <laughs> Let's get started. I'm expecting a Bible. <laughs> <laughs> no more heroes. Japanese. Hepburn. No more heroes. I am probably going to mispronounce a lot of things. Is an action adventure hack and slash video game series developed by Grasshopper Manufacture and was created by Goichi Suda, also known by his nickname Suda51. The series title comes from the album title, No More Heroes, which was released by the British punk band, The Stranglers. The games follow Travis Touchdown, a fan of video games, anime, manga, and wrestling, who wins a beam katana in an auction from which he inadvertently becomes involved in the United Assassins Association and forced to kill assassins higher in rank to prevent other assassins from targeting him. That's not true. <laughs> it is, all it's lies. not true at all. <laughs> well, it's it's an interpretation of the facts. But mm. the the implication of Travis's motivations there. Yeah. I don't think that's entirely accurate. He does win a beam katana, which is basically an off-brand lightsaber from a online auction. Uh, but he doesn't inadvertently become involved. He actively wants to become involved. And you find out why he wants to become involved at the very end of the game, and it's actually a really exciting twist that I won't give away now, but he does, in fact, choose to kill people and maybe be killed by them. He he loves it. A total of five No More Heroes titles have been released worldwide. Gameplay. Throughout the games, the player controls the character Travis Touchdown. The first game has a free-roaming world, allowing Travis to move around on foot or on his modified scooter. The Schlippelger, never said that right. Gameplay is open-ended with the condition that the player must kill the top 10 assassins to make the storyline progress. There are numerous part-time job side quests to earn money, which can be spent on weapons, training sessions, clothes, and videotapes. (laughs) (laughs) I know. In several of the games, money is also required to compete in a ranking fight with one of the top assassins. In No More Heroes 2, Desperate Struggle, the open world is replaced by a map screen. And the mini games that Travis can do to gain money and become stronger are 8-bit style games in genres including action, puzzle, and racing. While recent ports and entries contain more traditional control options, the mainline games are heavily designed to support motion control combat. On the Wii, control is handled through the Wii Remote and Nunchuck attachment with the remote controlling his weapon, the Beam Katana, and the Nunchuck moving Travis. Most attacks are performed using the A button with certain other moves, including the death blow and sword lock struggles executed by performing on-screen prompts and directional motions. Further, since the beam katana run on batteries, they must be charged from time to time by pressing the one button on the remote and shaking it. Travis's beam katana can also be upgraded and replaced throughout the game by visiting Dr. Naomi. While the katana does not follow the exact position of the remote, 
it is able to distinguish between a high and low position, which varies the character's stance and the attacks done. In addition to attacks with the beam katana, Travis can kick and punch, and when enemies are stunned, he can throw them with a number of professional wrestling maneuvers done by manipulating both the Wii Remote and Nunchuck. Upon successfully killing enemies, Travis has a chance to activate a dark side mode represented by a random roll of a slot machine. If the slots are lined up, he will receive a temporary power-up based on the slot, which can range from attacks being able to instantly set up death blows to sending out a shockwave that kills all enemies in the area. I have a quick question. <laughs> Is Dr. Naomi like Nurse Joy? From the Pokemon? Pokemon? Yeah. Uh, she is like Nurse Joy in that she is in a place and never leaves that place, which is strange. She can go there day and night and she is there. And in fact, in the latest game in the series, she just becomes a tree. Oh. Never go anywhere. She just planted roots in Travis's basement, which is interesting. But she is a strange character in that she is in her 80s, I believe, but has kept her youthful appearance using plastic surgery and has <laughs> enormous bosoms so for fans that were oogling her body they were they were shocked when she became a tree i'm but sure they it. were i mean i'm sure there's people who picked up the game specifically because she was in the game and then when she's a tree they're like what exactly and you know what they don't explain it at all i had to interview the developer i'm like so why is she a tree now he's like oh she uh she just got really excited about science and uh just became just decided to turn herself into a tree. <laughs> it's that kind of game. Starting from No More Heroes to Desperate Struggle, the series introduced additional playable characters such as Shinobu Jacobs and Henry Cooldown, who control differently from Travis. The game also expanded Travis's move repertoire by allowing him to switch beam katanas in combat and introducing the Ecstasy Gouge, which which rewards the player with passive boosts when successfully dealing uncontested damage, as well as offering a unique dark side mode on command. Introduced in Travis Strikes Again No More Heroes is the ability to equip skill chips, named after Gundam models that allow the player to utilize an array of special attacks, ranging from scattergun type blast to an orbital laser. Um, I love the idea of an ecstasy gauge. I was going to say, I don't know if you were able to pick it up based on just the text here, but there is a lot of phallic humor in the No More Heroes series. When Victor was reading earlier, he was talking about the motion controls and charging <laughs> the weapon. That's all done in a, a uh, what they would call the wank off motion. So that forces the player on the Wii remote to actually do the thing. And it is done... In a way that's supposed to make you feel like, oh, this is so stupid. I can't believe it. But also makes you think, I am so stupid. What am I doing with my life? And that's a, actually a, a key meta theme of the No More Heroes series is Travis often asks himself, like, why am I? What am I doing? How do I get out of this? And it's a game about video games, which was not something that a lot of people understood at the time. Games, main series, No More Heroes, 2007. Main article, No More Heroes video game. Released on Wii in 2007, the story follows Travis Touchdown, who is a stereotypical otaku. His motel room decorated with professional wrestling and anime collectibles, living in near poverty in the No More Heroes motel of the fictional town of Santa Destroy, California. After winning a beam katana in an internet auction, he runs out of money to buy video games and wrestling videos. After meeting Sylvia Crystal, he accepts a job to kill Helter Skelter, also known as the Drifter, which <laughs> earns him <laughs> rank 11 by the United Assassins Association, a governing body of assassins. Realizing that he has the opportunity to make it to the top, he sets out to secure himself a coveted position of number one assassin in the UAA. An enhanced port, No More Heroes, Heroes Paradise, was released on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 in 2010. A port of the original version was later released on the Nintendo Switch in 2020 and the Amazon Luna. The Amazon Luna in 2021? What the heck I, is a... the... The Amazon Luna thing is 
is like the is an alternate dimension thing for me. I've never heard of that. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I know. Is, is it the Berenstein Bears or the Berenstein? Because <laughs> I've never heard of Amazon Luna. Yeah, no kidding. That's the Mandela effect. This is my yeah. Mandela effect. I've no never kidding. heard of that. That's going to be a future episode that's going to be hotly listened to. It's going to be a big hit. No that More question. Heroes 2. Desperate Struggle 2010. Main article, No More Heroes 2, Desperate Struggle. Released on Wii in 2010, set three years after Travis Touchdown became the top assassin in the United Assassins Association, UAA, and walked away. Travis has returned to Santa Destroy and fights Skelter Helter, who seeks revenge on Travis for killing his older brother, Helter Skelter, prior to the first game. After winning the battle, he meets Sylvia Christel, who informs him he is ranked as the 51st best assassin. The nearly dead Skelter Helter interrupts them and warns Travis that he and his conspirators will still have their revenge. A port of Desperate Struggle was later released for the Nintendo Switch in 2020 and for the Amazon Luna in 2021. Amazon friggin' Luna? <laughs> it's still there. What? <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, when, when those guys die, he cuts off uh, Skelter Helter's head, and then his head flies into the air and blood splurts everywhere, and then it lands <laughs> back on his neck, and he talks some more. <laughs> and then he knocks, I think he knocks the head off after that, but yeah. It's, Wait, uh, his it's head, insane. his head flies up and he talks some more. His head flies into the air and then lands perfectly back on his neck. And, it, like, it, it, and another thing and just good. Gets and they summarize it. that by saying the nearly dead <laughs> Skelter Helter. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really hard to summarize. No More Heroes 2019 main article. Travis Strikes Again. No More Heroes released on Nintendo Switch in 2019. The game is primarily viewed from a top-down perspective as opposed to the third-person view of main series. So when their grammar is bad in Wikipedia, we just run with it, right? Yep. Yeah, we'll just sometimes say, we, we just read that as written. To yeah, <laughs> we read that as written. Travis Touchdown fights Badman, the father of Bad Girl, an assassin Travis previously killed. The two are drawn into a possessed video game console and must fight through its various games. As the first title Suda has directed since the first No More Heroes, Suda has collaborated with several indie developers to feature elements from their games in Travis Strikes Again. While part of the No More Heroes story, Suda does not consider the game a direct sequel to the previous title No More Heroes 2 Desperate Struggle, but a fresh start for the character Travis. A port of Travis Strikes Again, subtitled as Complete Edition, was released on PlayStation 4 and Windows later in 2019 have either of you played the legend of zelda games where there's a horse named apona you know what I'm um about. i i did play a game a legend of zelda game with a horse i did not know what its name was because i didn't care <laughs> <laughs> well it's probably <laughs> apona and apona is in travis strikes again no more heroes what and the horse talks travis rides the horse to to go fight dracula it, it, it's completely <laughs> the the amount he got. <laughs> so their worlds are connected. Sometimes. No more heroes three 2021 main article. No more heroes three released on August 27th, 2021 for the Nintendo switch. No more heroes three takes place nine years after no more heroes two and two years after Travis strikes again. No more heroes and has Travis returned to his hometown of Santa destroy from his exile. He encounters a huge artificial metropolis floating in the sea. Isn't that called an island? Anyway. <laughs> and a mysterious flying object high above the city. Travis now has to defend the world from a super powerful army of aliens. All right. Um, that was actually uh, my paragraph to read, but... Uh, oh. oh. That's, oh, a, that's fine. I'll just read the next paragraph, uh, I guess. Uh... Spinoffs. No More Heroes World Ranker 2012, released on Android and iOS in 2012 in Japan only, players can create their own assassin and complete missions, killing assassins to move up in rank. It featured touchscreen controls and multiplayer social elements. The game has been since removed from servers. 
<laughs> Why? <laughs> what what happened? Something it sounds like something bad happened. I know. What what you know, it's so interesting, right? The less you say, the worse <laughs> it sounds. World Ranker was despised by the creator of No More Heroes. Oh. He hmm. he was a, kind of ashamed of it. Essentially, the series did a lot better. The first game, anyway, did a lot better than he planned for. And then all of a sudden, he was almost a mainstream hit. So after it became a big hit, he was sort of like, yeah, let's just do more. You want to make an app? You want to? There was actually three other phone games that aren't listed on this Wikipedia page that he also doesn't like. So he just really disavowed himself from the stuff that he had hoped would turn out good because he trusted other people to make it and it, it didn't turn out that great. I get that can suck, especially if it's like something that you made that's something that you really love. And then yeah. you know, people are like, yeah, our version of it is sort of like it. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's essentially I mean, they happened. have the same faces. <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, it was akin to you see it in the in the big movies where there's a a guy who makes it big, and then I think it happened to Rocky actually, and then he ended up being in commercials for stuff he didn't really care about and get beaten up by Hulk Hogan. The the stardom caused his life to change in a way that sort of went out of his control. It was similar similar to that, and that's why as we read in the Wikipedia page. He took a nine-year hiatus from directing games and then came back with Travis Strikes Again and it was really sort of his way to bring integrity back to the to his series, I think. It was very nicely done. Anyway, Legacy. Travis Touchdown appears in Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen on the Nintendo Switch as part of a collaboration with Capcom and Grasshopper Manufacture to feature a downloadable pawn named Travis TD from April 25th to July 8th, 2019. Travis also appears as a downloadable Mii Fighter costume in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, along with three spirits based on No More Heroes 3, added in celebration of the game's release. The fact that he got into Smash Bros., I don't know if you two are... I'm very aware. familiar with Smash Bros. It's a pretty big deal to get into Smash Bros. And he didn't yeah, get Yeah, that's it. like, that's the peak of your career. Yeah, yeah, it's it's sort of like winning an Oscar. And he didn't get in as a main fighter, but he got in as a costume that you can dress as, which is pretty uh -huh. close. Yeah, and then some some extra content you can uh, apply to your character to to give them buffs to their stats. That's what the spirits are. So yeah, pretty big deal that he got in there. Well, he said he wanted Travis to be famous, so that's exactly. Famous. <laughs> yeah he is pretty famous though his games again just don't sell that well it's very interesting this has been the wikipedia page for no more heroes series thanks for listening to wikilisten you can find us at wikilisten.com and on all social media at wikilisten except for twitter which is at wiki underscore listen if there is a page you'd like us to read please let us know we 